Jason, you know when like a QS goes to site and they're in like perfectly clean gear from head to toe and everyone's like, oh, what's this guy doing here? Yeah. Your headphones are so shiny. It's like it's your first day. <laughs> they are. <laughs> They are glossy. I had I had five minutes before this. I thought I'd just polish them up for Shine you. Shine them. Um, the old shoe polish. I don't know what's shinier, the headphones or your or your skull. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I, I um, think you led me into that. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I'll take that. Hello and welcome to episode 31 of the Offsite Podcast, where we chat all things construction and technology. My name's Carlos Cavallo. And I'm Jason Lanzini. G'day, Carlos. How are you going? Pretty good, thanks. How are you doing? I, well, I'm slightly under the weather. I haven't had a massive night or anything. It's the joys of a, a toddler. Uh, it's a new illness every week. And this week, it's I'm losing my voice. That is a uh, spectrum. Illness. Getting ill from a toddler or a Monday night out in town. That is, there's two different types yeah, of people that. Anyone that knows me knows it definitely wasn't the night out. But, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. But for those 100%. that don't, no, it wasn't. For sure. Right. So today we have a guest on the pod. I've done my usual LinkedIn stalk to uh, pull together a bit of an intro. Um, so uh, today's guest is a chartered civil engineer. Um, his previous sort of life was an agent for contractors like Fogg Fitzpatrick and Costain. Costain was actually part of the Bond Street team for, the, for a little bit of time, which I wasn't aware of. Um, he's a Forbes 30 under 30, which must be a wicked accolade for your Tinder profile. And um, he's we'll the come co-founder. Back to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's the co-founder of Index. Uh, most of you guys will know him as George Smithies. Uh, great to have you on the podcast, mate. How are you? Very good. And uh, yeah, what an intro. Cheers for that. Really, you know, <laughs> long to me before we even started. Yeah, no problem. Talk to us a little bit about the Forbes 30 under 30. How does that work? Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, I get a lot of stick for this. And um, I mean, you guys will have seen the media recently. It's not looking good for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> lots of lots of time being done. <laughs> yeah, really? Well, I mean, Sam Bangman fried um, Elizabeth. Yeah, Bones. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I'm getting a lot of stick for that at the moment. Good fun. I think it's one of those things, the longer you wait, the more you've got a chance of making it. Like 30 under 30 is real hard. Then 40 under 40, it like winds a bit. 50 <laughs> under 50. We're going I'm, I'm reckon I'll come good yeah. about like, yeah, 90 under 90 is where I'm trying to get it. At. <laughs> How far off are you? you, you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, imagine updating your LinkedIn profile when you're 90 with that. So. Right. <laughs> so George, um, I guess... To kick off and set the scene a bit, can you tell us a bit about what Index does? Yeah, so I mean, like you introduced me, I'm civil engineer by trade and, and Aaron, my co-founder, civil engineer as well. I was horizontal build, he was vertical build. Um, so I was more the sort of the civils, the road, the rails, that sort of stuff. And our, our just pure frustrations around, you know, people, construction sites, how we communicate, how we add value, getting and extracting detail out of these people who are actually on the jobs and giving the the value to the, you know, the people sat back in the office. So index was around that data capture. It started around the induction process. It was all around, you know, if we know our people better, we know how they're qualified. We know how they're experienced. We know where they live. Can we deliver projects better? And that that's where it all sort of started, really. So we boil that down and you're going to have to forgive me because I'm a QS, not an engineer. So Which, my site... Don't worry, I've scored your LinkedIn as well. <laughs> yeah, but my, my interaction with this is slightly different. I'm normally just querying people in numbers. He's um, just not paying anyone so, is what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But luckily we get paid double the engineer, so it works out fine. <laughs> um, so you obviously go through this induction process. So you grab the details of these individuals. You can provide them information like during their tenure on site. But then is it also the sort of swipes and understanding who's where, when, and everything else and tying that back to records? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Which, you know, for yourself, you know, your record keeping, all that sort of stuff is, is perfect. So, you know, you can be hitting your suppliers as you probably do on a daily basis. Um, but you know, it's, it's, <laughs> what? what was that? <laughs> Work with our suppliers. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That collaborative approach, right? Um, <laughs> no, I mean, look, it's, it's, it's more than just, you know, big brother, we're watching you time records. It's, you know, that fatigue piece, you know, are, are people working too many hours? Are we overworking people? Are we causing ourselves danger? 
you know, Index is, is, a, is a health and safety platform at its heart, but it's really trying to help that person down on the ground, you know, achieve their job in a better way, a quicker way, but also in a safer way. Um, you know, if we can build a profile up of each individual and start to really understand, you know, what lets them, what allows them to tick, you know, why, why are they not producing, you know, the outputs that we were hoping of them last week, you know, how can we improve that? How can we sp improve our supply chain? How can we improve our, our main contracts? And then how can we improve sort of, you know, our frameworks and things like that as well. So there's a lot going and on the, there. The fatigue piece, especially with mega projects, obviously they pretty rapidly change between like standard shifts, triple shifts, night shift. So for individuals to be able to manage that, yeah, seems like a useful, yeah, useful part. I noticed you've got two products. So what we just spoken about the index side, and if so, what's record Requidex? What's yeah, yeah. Like? So, <laughs> so we haven't really spoken much about Requidex yet at all. So Requidex was basically born out of, as you guys probably know, you're down with site teams and you're talking to them and you're trying to work out, you know, what's working, what's not working, how can we improve? And what we started to realize is that allowing suppliers of labor to get into projects in a way that uh, was managed properly, very transparent, equal opportunity to all suppliers was really, really difficult. So these big mega projects, which, you know, you guys work on H2 and things like that, being able to get that labor into these projects is, is really, really quite difficult. It's normally you pick up the phone and, you know, you might have five lads there on Monday. You might, you might not, you might have them the following Monday. And it was trying to create a, a tech layer that basically manages that process. So it's really, really boring. You know, about a boring, we thought inductions was boring. Like this is, this is a whole new level. Okay. <laughs> but, That's oh, your elevator pitch for index. <laughs> that always grabs everyone's attention. I mean, I saw your guys light, eyes light up. You're like, right. Okay. Tell me more. <laughs> cool. Um, and, uh, just uh, one or two more questions before I let Jason jump in. So, um, your typical sort of customer and typical deployment, are you working with like logistics, induction, sort of safety teams initially to sort of bring you guys in early doors before you start inducting onto a project? Is that how it works? Is that who you sort of interacting with? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, tip, I mean, the perfect, perfect person we go into is health and safety director. Yeah. We start chatting away there, sort of showing some of the value, uh, get a, a trial demo project sort of set up with them, allow them to, to see the, the outputs and, and then build it sort of business case to roll it further. You know, that would be our, our perfect approach. Sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll come in at a project team level will be recommended by, by someone else. And, and that's very much the way in which we like to work. It's through recommendation, existing users, people going out and just sharing the love. We don't really do that outboundy sales stuff. You know, I, I don't know, question back to you guys, you know, how does that work for, you know, do you do outbound stuff or is it natural? You know, construction is very natural. Everyone knows everybody. It's uh, you've heard of this, you've heard of that, introduce you to this person, that sort of stuff. So, you know, that's how we, we like to roll. Yeah. It's definitely like a industry that's ripe for referrals. It's relatively exactly. small people talk. Um, and there's just a few main contractors that everyone bounces between. So cool. And, um, typically are you guys sort of building infrastructure, a bit of both? Yeah, I mean, we started in the rail because of my background in rail. You know, we got in a couple of crossroad jobs and, and that's where we uh, we kicked off. Um, then, you know, based on the market, really, you know, we got quite a lot of sort of logistics um, centers, big sheds, basically. Um, got in a load of data centers more recently. Uh, we, we still do, do a fair bit of sort of civils infrastructure. Um, it, it really does just depend on... Yeah, who's passed on the recommendation and where we end up? We're not. We're pretty agnostic with the types of work um, that we that we that we work on, really. Cool, Jason. All right. Uh, thanks for tapping me in. Sorry, and then my voice. <laughs> well, goes the voice straight together. <laughs> so, George, I'm always super interested in like the the moment. Lots of people in construction constantly talk to me about how. They see this problem, they see that problem. They've had this idea of this. They've had an idea of solving it some other way. I'm always super intrigued and impressed with the people that actually go and, and, and do it. So if I can take you back to like the, the moment you guys started out, like what was, what was the thing that, you know, what was it like? What got you to make the decision? Did you have some like early pilot projects that really helped you get things rolling? What was sort of the impetus? If you imagine you're talking to someone 
I've had a couple of meetings recently with folks who've got these ideas, they're working for contractors and they want to know how to like make it, like take that first step out of there. What was that for you, you guys? Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's, you know, I remember it very, very well. Um, you know, originally I was, I was working for Volkers and I was really enjoying what I was doing there. I was like, you know, I'm going to climb the ladder here and I'm going to, I'm going to do really, really well. And pure frustration just around how much paperwork I hated. I hated tech. You know, I, I hated the fact we were trying to bring that's, in these that's digital, the digital, digital forms and all this sort of stuff. And I was just like, crap, because you have to do it three times and all this sort of stuff. Um, so anyway, that, that sort of passed me by. I ended up going out to Uganda for three months just to like do a bit of work and stuff like that out there and sort of spend a bit of time just sort of thinking about things and then came back and thought, right, I need to, I need to earn some money now. Um, so I went down to Bond Street because Costain were paying quite well down there, uh, a bit of contract work. I see. I see. You're, you're. Are you a? Are you a Bond Street alumni as well? Are you? Well, yeah. I. I. I think Carlos. Are you. You Bond Street as well. I. I, I was Paddington. Jason. Yeah, okay. It was right. Jason. It was you who was Bond Street. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 My brother was Bond Street. Oh. So. <laughs> that was the melting pot, was it? Mate, honestly, I. I turned up there and I sat in an induction room until two o'clock in the afternoon. And I thought, this is the one, this is what I'm going to go out. So that was it. You know, it was, it was, as, it was as simple as that. I spoke to Aaron, who was, he was on the, um, <clears throat> the oversight development, uh, Tottenham court road. And we met for lunch, I think that day or the next day and just said, right, let's go and build this. And then that's where it all kicked off from most of it. So inductions are inductions like your hero product. That's what you get to. That's really like the starting point for, for like new customers. Um, Do you want to know what our original name. name our original name was? Yeah, so oh, I want to know what in, I want to know the index uh, origin story as well. But what's the original name? Well, so when we started, it was called Induct Me. Talk about me, right? <laughs> what the hell? So yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and suggestive. Only, that was our only product. Yeah, no, well, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a strange name, really. Um, so yeah, so anyway, we yeah. Going on to your question, so we, we started with Induct Me and we'd create this logo, right? That was a, an eye with a man's head and a helmet on it. And then we were like, we can't call it this. <laughs> so we had, obviously that as an issue. And we're like, bloody hell, so we've got to start with an eye. We've got to have a capital letter in there somewhere. Um, how are we going to do it? And, and then we were like, right, okay, well, how about innovative, I-N-N, data exchange, DEX? And we were like, banging, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Yeah. Nice. That, <laughs> but that, that gives you all sorts of options. That's perfect. Exactly. You know, you could go stuff. anywhere with that. Exactly. <laughs> and so, yeah, going back to that, like, so you started, you were like, yep, yeah, this is what we're going to go after. Inductions are like the hero product. Did you go and like build it and then go try and sell it? Or was it like you had a couple of projects and you, you sort of built around their requirements? Yeah. Yeah. So we had a couple of projects. We had Ilford station over in East London, which was my old employer managed to <coughs> convince uh, an old boss of mine to, to give it a go and kick it about and, uh, and see what he thought and it fell apart many times. Um, as, yeah, as we've been there. Do, you know, um, and then we had a couple of others sort of actually suppliers who I'd worked with before, um, just asking them, you know, will will they give it a bit of a kick around as well? And they did and they fed back and. Yeah, I guess for that first year, we really had a product that didn't really add any value, but with that feedback mm -hmm. loop coming in and, and mm -hmm. we've, we've retained that feedback loop, you know, that's, that's really biggest part about our business is, is spending time with our client base. Everybody who's, who's employed index that's like client facing is, you know, X construction. So, you know, they're, they're section engineers, they're site managers, they're project managers, yep. those types of people who, when they turn up, they know how to, how to talk to people to start off with. Um, but also, you know, when someone's explaining really? a problem and issue, actually understanding yeah. that issue and being able to articulate it's you know, really, really important. And so as a product, you are, you're providing this sort of almost like an integration layer with imagine some element of, of interface or, or UI and you're, you're connecting to, uh, you like, like, let's take like a, a gate access type thing. Are you connecting to what the customer already has? Are you recommending a product? Are you, how far in that, like how vertically integrated is 
are you now and what's the aspiration, I guess? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we will do, we'll do everything. We'll do it end to end if the customer wants. Um, and I'd say yep. probably 75% of our projects probably are end to end, but then we'll also work with, say they've got a security company they work with. Yeah, you know, we can either retrofit or we can just literally plug our software straight into whatever type of maybe biometrics or whatever they've got sort of set up. Um, and then we also have for your sort of rail projects where maybe you've got say 40 access points along, you know, 50 kilometers of rail, you just use a geofencing facility then for those, which can just be done on anybody's, uh, anybody's phone, a tablet, that sort of stuff. Cool. Carlos, I saw you were going to jump in there. Yeah, I tried out the old hand raise feature. Um, Very in terms of the <laughs> the information that you gather on like individuals that are joining a site, and I appreciate there's going to be all sorts of rules between like contractors and even sites. But is that information once you gather it? Is it like cross project transferable? Oh, okay. So, like, so just to be clear, up... you interrupt, you come in and ask my question that I was literally going to. Oh, ask. is that yours? <laughs> no, I know I, we hadn't <laughs> planned the questions, but like I was thinking the same thing. So that's a yeah, great <laughs> yeah. question. Yeah, so like if, if you turn up to a Costain site, can you then go to another Costain site and like 90% is done because you've already gathered the information or is it like super strict of like anything personal has to stay with that site and then you're fresh on the next? No, so the way in which we build it is a bit like, you know, a LinkedIn profile or something like that. You build it once, you put, you put all that information into it, you own that profile. And every time you go to a new job, whether it be a Costain job, Kelp Road job, a Scans job, whatever, you just push that profile across them. So it really does it for the, for the individual, as soon as they've gone to their second site, they've seen the benefit. They can also take their timesheets directly out of it. You know, there's, there's lots mm. of value add for that individual and that's what makes the product sticky. And that's why, you know, we've had feedback where someone will go into an induction room and they're not using index and the guy who's sat there, who's, you know, maybe a laborer or more chippy or whatever. And be like, why the hell aren't you using index? And that's, that's when, you know, that's when things get really exciting is that when it's those types of people who are actually feeding back saying, I like use, I like using this product, right? You know, that's, that's mad. Yeah. I, I, I imagine that's the like genesis of like the Recodex, uh, if I've pronounced that uh, correctly, product as yeah. well, right? Like giving uh, someone external a way to go, I need five people with these requirements. You're essentially searching across that database almost, wouldn't you be? So... Uh, no, we we don't actually do that right now. But as that database would build out, you know, you could you could potentially make profiles and, and do that sort of thing as well. Um, Carlos, did you have any other question? No, I was just stealing yours. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> so, George, I probably have said this like a million times in different uh, episodes, but like everyone always says, and like whenever you read, and I don't know if you dwell on LinkedIn very long, but like construction slow to adopt technology, it fights back against change, all those sorts of things. We spoke about like referrals and the power of that in construction, but are there any other like tricks that you've seen in terms of like on the ground? Cause I'd imagine you go into a new project, you've convinced or you've sold to the sales, the safety team, but suddenly you might have, you know, 50, a hundred, 200 workforce needing to use your, your product. Are there any, tips, tricks, principles around getting, uh, making that like change smoother? I mean, I think it probably, one of the biggest parts is comes back to a point I made earlier, those, that implementation team, you know, whatever you want to call them, we call them operations. They understand it. They've been through the problems before. They know exactly when, when someone's going to tear around and say, what's this load of crap? And, you know, chuck the app out the window, basically scenario, that person's been there. You know, they, they understand the frustration and then it's been able to just explain in the same language that that person speaks in about why it's going to benefit them, how it's going to help them. It's much easier <laughs> when you've either rolled out in that business before and there's someone there in that room who's already used it and they stand up yeah. and they say, actually guys, it's really worthwhile. So as you know, you get momentum in the industry and yeah, you start getting that cross-pollination of different contractors using it and then the supply chain then moving between contractors and things like that. It just gets easier and easier every day. And, and we see that every day, apart from yeah. them when we say, oh, we're going to pick this up and we're going to go into the energy sector. And then you're like, oh, Jesus Christ, we've got to start again. Yeah, Shit. exactly. So that, that kind of, um, yeah, I could definitely see how you can build momentum within a contractor, the set of supply chain that they use frequently 
is your is a key way to get through to other contractors. So you get like a big referral network geographically and probably within within verticals. What does that tell you about, you know, what's what's the future look like for you guys? Is the plan to uh, expand sectors? Is it expand uh, geographically? Is it, you know, more products? You know, is it all of the three? And, and, and what does it look like to open a new market for you? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's quite, it's, it, that is a really, really interesting question and it's quite appropriate, really. You know, we've, we went down to, we went down to Oz quite early on. Um, we had someone over here who decided to move to Oz and want to take the product with them. And we were like, yep. great, take it. Um, down to Sydney Metro that's been running now down there probably for about three years. It's great, but we haven't put sort of time into going and trying to expand that market. So, you know, I don't know what that quite tells you. Are we, maybe we're not optimistic enough about it. Maybe there's too many, we think there's too many competitors maybe in that market. I don't, I don't know. Same with Europe. We've gone into Europe, but we've gone there with, you know, companies that already operate over here who are doing work in Germany, Netherlands, Spain, Poland, those sorts of areas. Yeah. And I think our strategy really is just, just go where we're pulled, you know, create enough of a position in this market that as soon as anybody leaves this market, they're wanting to take us with them. I mean, the cost of acquiring a new customer in a new market, in a completely new geography. I mean, it's a nightmare. It took us two years to get going probably over here. And that's only because we had a decent network. Um, yeah. So, yeah. There's like an interesting set of factors when I talk to other construction software companies around like, because because at Apex, we target primarily the biggest contractors on, on bigger projects because in our specific scenario, the pain point is most acute, the bigger the project. But because of that, we trade off like the velocity of project turnover, like our projects might go for four years, five years, whereas other companies or other software companies, if they will target like a, a smaller size contractor with a smaller size project, if you've got that great referral system where people go on a project, they like it, they go to another project, the smaller jobs, the shorter duration can really accelerate that like feedback loop. And so if you are, if you actually don't care, not don't care, but it doesn't really matter whether you go big contractor or small contractor, I'd imagine you get quicker feedback on that, like uh, adoption between a whole company or within a sector at the, at the smaller end, uh, much quicker. I don't know if that's true or not, but it, they're a set of wild assumptions that I make. I mean, you, you know, you could, you could say that that whole funnel changes in terms of its length because the sales cycle into a tier sort of two or, you know, maybe someone on the peripheral of a two and a one, or maybe just a, a solid mm -hmm. two maybe even a three, you know, the decision makers, uh, is probably one, two, maybe three people mm -hmm. difference. Then when you put that to a top 10, yeah, you, know, you could be, I mean, we've, we've been 18 months with sort of top 10 contractors getting projects over the line. And then like you say, then you've got a four year job, which is your proof of concept. Yeah. By which time, you know, your, your tech's out of date in five years' time and what you sold them originally is suddenly you know, not not the product that you've now got. And, you know, people people don't like that either. You know, if you've brought in something and it's changed and it's adapted, yeah. that can um, put people off too. So, yeah, I think that's it's quite interesting, that thought. I'd not actually sort of stood back and, and looked at those as two options. I think we had just naturally gone in one direction um just because yep. it was less barriers to entry i think do you see most of the contractors uh the uh using your software are they coming from like no solution are they coming from another set of tools are they coming from a like a mixed bag of five different things doing what you do what does that normally look like yeah so they're all coming from an existing solution with an existing line in that cost plan that's golden you know, if you were just replacing in terms of cost for cost with something that's 10 times, be 10 times better, you're going to, you're going to easily knock, knock down the door. Um, and, and that's our strategy is that, yeah, it doesn't cost uh, anything the, more and you get a lot more value. Easy. Does the thing that you're replacing start with D? Um, it, it might be. I've just There's a few in the market. There's a few in the market. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I've I've uh, I've swiped onto a lot of sites, especially down here in Oz, and there's a there's a couple of names that uh, 
um, that come up and yeah, it looks like a box made in the, in, you know, post-war era, uh, you know, with a screen that someone's taken a hammer to on it. Um, yeah, yeah, not yeah. particularly sexy. Like I said, nothing that we do sexy, all right? <laughs> boring. Oh, yeah, we got that. The headline, boring. Um, <laughs> uh, cool. Carlos, I'm conscious of time. Do you have any, uh, do you have any other final questions, mate? No, nah, I don't think so. I love the, uh, the subtle, does it begin with D then? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's really interesting. It's definitely serving like this this purpose. I can remember again my limited exp uh, experience of inductions are largely me doing my own inductions rather than trying to run or help facilitate an induction. But the gathering of like CSCS and all the different various permits you have for using plant machinery and everything else, I can imagine that really is like a complete time killer, especially on large projects where your turnover of staff is high. So it makes a lot of sense to actually pull this information and. And leave it there on a profile with the individual so uh sounds interesting um, I, think, I think that's the you know that is the the short value add i think the the, the long-term thing that we see is that you know if you can connect those two and a half million construction workers and you know geographically how they're skilled how they're experienced you know, yeah my my long term and this is you know it's never going to happen but my long term is right we're building a nuclear power station up in dundee you know, how are we going to invest in upskilling individuals so we get a positive benefit on that local economy when that project's actually built? You know, yep. it's never going to happen because we have four-year terms in terms of politics. But, you know, that would be the, that would be the, the sort of the, the, the golden, yeah, yeah, the golden album, yes, but yeah. You, yeah well, I'd see also you could, you, could, you could have all sorts of value add for like a, a contractor going for some sort of audit process um or like whatever the ISO standard that they're going to go towards we have a product internally that we use for for compliance and auditing it has like an order to portal you know they charge us a boatload of money for for that it's yeah when you're running a when you're running a, a company compliance is uh is massive and uh having a way to know that you know all the people within the business are at the standard they need to be um super valuable super yeah. valuable Definitely, but but definitely boring. Remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boring but important. That's it. <laughs> Mate, thank you very much for taking the time. Really appreciate it. It was lovely to chat to you. And uh and yeah, I'm sorry it was so short. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, thanks, George. Nice one. Cheers, mate.